Coach Pilardi here. CAD Level 5, using Onshape for Vex Robotics. Today's topic, where to get parts. You want to design your own robot, and to do that, you need parts. Parts are organized into a parts library, and where and how you get to the parts library has changed a lot in the last couple months. PTC, the company that makes Onshape, has been working with Vex Robotics to create an official parts library. The library is easy to set up, it's easy to use, and it's high quality too. All the parts have names and descriptions and part numbers, and the colors and weights and materials are all correct too. So you can generate a usable build of materials or calculate the center of mass. So let's get started by logging into Onshape, and we're gonna create a new project. So we have this create button in the upper left. We're gonna create a new document, and we're gonna call it level five. All right, so it's the first time we create a new project. We want to build something ourselves. This is what you start with. Onshape is a CAD program that can be used in many different applications. It could be used to develop a tractor or the handle for a tool or a VEX robot. Nobody besides somebody building a VEX robot would use VEX parts. So there's no list of parts up here for you to select from. It's not like being in the lab where you have like all your metal in one spot and you just go get it. There's two things you get on, in a new project. You get a part studio and you get an assembly, and both of them are completely blank. Part Studio is where you create parts, so if you wanted to like create a gear of your own, you could do that in a Part Studio. Maybe we'll explore Part Studios much later, but today we're gonna to delete that Part Studio. Instead, we're gonna focus on the assembly, and we need parts to create an assembly. Let me show you where you get those. In the upper left, look for a button that says Insert. Click on it. It'll open a dialog that says insert parts and assemblies. At the top, there's three tabs. It'll start in current document. You want to go to other documents. Now it's going to show you a navigation list that's similar to what was on your home screen. And we're going to go down here to that label we created called VEX V5 Parts. If you didn't create this label, go back to the level two video and create it. You're really going to need this right now. So here it is. We got our label VEX V5 Parts. Click on that. These are all the VEX parts now, and they're categorized. So at the top here, we have wheels and rollers, then we have bearings and collars, and when you select one of these, it'll show you all the parts in that category that you can select from. To select the part that you want, just click on it, and it'll add it to your drawing. Simple as that. Okay, create a new document and add an Omni wheel to your assembly. Okay, let's take a closer look at that parts list. I'm gonna press insert again. And um, it remembers where I was, so it, um, it's showing me the list of wheels again. Um, let's scroll through there. We have flex wheels, mechanum wheels, anything that rolls is going to be in this list. Let's go back to the other list. Uh, bearings, collars, etc. These are all smaller parts. We have things that you could attach to a wheel, bearing plates, clamping shafts, inserts of various kinds, the new uh, ball bearing pillow, bearings, shaft collars, that sort of stuff. That's all in there. Chains and sprockets are here. Screws and nuts. Take a look at what's in there. Spacers and standoffs. Things that separate things. Gussets. Different types of gussets are in here. Uh, gears. Of course, we know what to expect in there. Electronics. Each electronic part is one part in the library. A brain is not two sides of a case and a bunch of screws and transistors and a thousand other parts. It's just a brain. Then they have a category for RoboSource nuts and screws. RoboSource is a separate store from VEX and they supply the colored screws and the shoulder screws and things like that. Structure. This is all your beams and all your metal. Um, and it's categorized by different types. We're going to come back here in a minute and take a look at those details. License plates and shafts. If you're designing your own robot, you'll get familiar with this list of parts. Another thing about this new library that's very cool is some of the parts are configurable. Let's take a look at shafts, for instance. So when I go into shafts, there's two types of shafts, of course, high strength or standard shafts. But then when I open the shaft list, it's not just a list of all the different sizes. You type in the size that you want. So, you know, you could have typed in a 1.5 before, but if you want a 1.57, you can do that now. So you can get exactly the right length that you want. Um, so we'll go ahead and actually we're gonna create a 
three inch shaft. First it's gonna generate it and then you add it. So there's my new shaft. Some of the other parts that are configurable, the mechanum wheel, so there could be a left or a right mechanum wheel. I can select the right and then, or I could select the left. On all the flex wheels, you can decide on the stiffness of it. So 30A is the, um, is, whoops, I got both of those there, is the softer one. But if I wanted to, I could, um, and actually I didn't want to insert that yet, so I'll just press the back arrow. If I wanted a harder type, I can just select that. And, um, and now I have the harder type. And I can do that with all the different flex wheels. Screws and nuts. Screws are configurable as well. Um, when I go to screws, I can select the length that I want. So I have, I'm gonna select a one inch screw and add that. Spacers, spacers and standoffs. So standoffs, again, I can select any standard length. It generates it, then I can put it into my drawing. Um, I can do the same thing with a half inch outer diameter spacers. I'm going to select a 1 8 but there's, um, there's other sizes too. Those are the standard sizes. And then there's also the um, 3 8 inch outer diameter spacers. And again, there's standard sizes for those. I'm going to add one over here. If they don't have the exact size you're looking for in a spacer, you can configure your own. So if I want one that has um, an outer diameter of 0.3, um, so it's a non-standard size, and the length is going to be... 0.29 inches. I can generate that and add that to my drawing too. The RoboSource uh, screws are configurable just like um, the, the VEX screws. Structure. This is something that, um, that you would change often. We looked at the different angles, C channels, bars, so you can have a one by one angle here. Right now it's 17.5 inches. Let's say I want 12.5. Um, I can do that. So I want a 12.5 two by two angle. So it's actually 25 long. And you can do it for the bar. So this is these are just one buys. Um, you can select whether they're going to be steel or aluminum. And C channels, they have all the different C channels. Um, again, steel or aluminum. Plate, you can uh, adjust the width or the length. The license plates are configurable. Now, this is a cool thing about it. You can type in the team number. So let's say we want to type in 1234Z. There's our license plate. And it works for VEX U too, so I can type VEX U because they have all those weird names. And there's my red license plate for VEX U. Try adding these parts to your model. We're going to use these again later in a future exercise, so if you're following along, don't skip this. So those are the configurable parts. And here's where it gets really cool. So let's say I added a shaft and I got my whole drawing ready to go, and I realized it's the wrong size. Well, normally you would go back and get the right size and then replace it. And if you've already attached it in a couple places, you're going to have to reattach it. With these new configurable parts, all I have to do is change the configuration. So this was a high strength shaft and uh, 15 inches. I can't change it to a low strength shaft, but I can change the, the length. So if I want that to be 14.2, I can change it. And it will only change on one end. So if it's attached on this end, it'll change it on the opposite end. It's the same for many of these parts. So for instance, like the, um, the right mechanum, you could change that to a left through configuration. Flex wheels, you can change the stiffness of the wheel. So you could change it from one of those hard black ones to a softer white one or the gray one in between. You could select multiples. So let's see, I have two of these wheels right now and I can change both of them at the same time. You can change the license plates. Aluminum plate, of course, you can change the width and the length on these. So having the ability to reconfigure your parts after they're already in the drawing is new. That's just way better. Uh, that's a huge change. Spacers, you know, if you don't get the right, a lot of times you're trying to figure out how many spacers you need and you need just a little bit more. You can modify this from a one half inch to a, a three eighths and just modify the part and everything is still in place. Go ahead and reconfigure those parts you added in the last exercise. So here's our big pile of parts again. A couple other things I didn't show you. There's so much stuff in this new parts library and I gotta show you all the different things that are in there that you might have missed. Um, so let's insert something else again. Let's take a look at the bearings. So these are all the parts. These are individual parts. There are also assemblies. These are assemblies with just a few parts. Parts that are frequently used together and they're already connected in these assemblies that are part of the parts library. So for instance, you're building a model of a drivetrain, uh, you're going to have a lot of bearing flats, right? And you're going to have um, nuts and bolts on each one of those, and you have to add each one of those to your drawing, and um, they add up. 
these pre-configured assemblies already have the nuts and bolts on there. And there's options to have bolts on, on each end or in the middle. Um, and all the different types of bearing flats are available like that. Even the new ball bearing and the pillow bearings and all of them. The bolts are already attached here, and so when I want, when I build an assembly, I just need one attachment point instead of doing five of these. Um, I'm just gonna select the surface that I want, I'm gonna attach it right here, and there it is. Other assemblies. So some other assemblies you might use are um, are wheels. So wheels, a lot of times you're gonna want to have, um, if it's a flex wheel, you might want to have one of those um, adapters on there. Uh, Versa adapter, you know, all the new wheels come with um, high strength shaft holes And so you might need to put those adapters in there for a low strength shaft And so these assemblies come with those already in there other assemblies um, For for pneumatics you want the piston to be able to move So the piston and the cylinder are actually two different pieces and they come together in assembly Give it a try add a flat bearing with screws assembly to your drawing One last feature of the new official parts library that I want to show you is the chain generator. So with the new library, you can create a chain to connect two sprockets together. I put together two sprockets on this plate. To generate the chain, I need to know the distance from the center of this sprocket to this sprocket. So let's use the measuring tool to find that. So there's the center of the sprocket. There's the center of the other sprocket. If I zoom out here, it shows me the X, Y, and Z distances, but the min distance is the one I want. So that dotted black line is from center to center, and it's 4.61 inches. Let's insert a chain. I'm going to go to Sprockets and Chains. Go down to the Configurable Chain Generator. And then I add my two sprocket sizes. It said small and large, but it's really just the first one and the second one. Put my center to center distance. That's what that C2C means. Generate. There's my chain. Click on it to insert it into the drawing. Look at that chain. It's beautiful. Now I just need to get the chain onto the sprockets. First thing I'm going to do is create a fastener to take one end of the chain and attach it to one of the sprockets. Getting it attached to the second sprocket is a little bit more complicated. First I need to rotate the sprocket around to get the chain close to the other sprocket, but it's still not exactly where I want it. So I'm gonna to have to use another type of offset that we haven't used before on this fastener. So I'm gonna click on the offset button, and then I'm gonna rotate about the Z axis. And it looks like it's about halfway between those two 90 degree marks. I'll try 45 degrees. Oh, uh, how about negative 45 degrees? That's closer, a little bit too far. How about a smaller number, maybe 25? Mm, close, a little bit more. Try 27. There it is. So the chain looks super cool in the drawing. You can't rotate it though. You can put it in your drawing though to see if anything's gonna interfere with it. You know, the path of the chain, there could be a beam in the way or something else. And if you draw the chain, um, you'll know if that's gonna happen. Um, it'll also make your mass calculations more accurate. This last exercise is optional, but if you want to create a chain, here are the instructions. That's the official parts library. Ain't it cool? Now that you know how to get parts, and you know how to connect parts, you have the skills you need to design your own robot in CAD. Of course, there are more sophisticated things you can do, like cutting plastic and parts and that sort of stuff in CAD, but that's like icing on the cake. You have the skills you need right now to design a robot in CAD. Good luck.